Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers where three Pro Tools experts demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Please welcome Master Instructor Anders Motz. Hello. And Uber Master Instructor Andy Hagerman. How you doing? And myself, Dave, we take you into the inner workings of Pro Tools and Ethos to help the user community better understand the industry's app. In this episode, we're looking at a question from Anthony who asks, how do I get rid of the uninstalled plugins that are still showing up on my drop-down menu? Now, this Great should, question. Well, this should be a relatively simple one as well, right? Um, we can probably make it complicated. We'll, um, oh, I'm sure we can. <laughs> we'll, we'll, do, we'll do our best. Okay, so let's uh, let's pose the scenario. So I've got a couple of plugins that I do actually want to get rid of in here. Um, I don't use either, any of the Bomb Factory stuff. Uh, what? You're totally missing out, Dave. Uh, yeah, really. that's it's, a shocker. It's because I just have other versions. That's all. Mm. So mm. I want to go. I want to get rid of those because I don't want to to have my list full up. I'd rather have it nice and concise. So um, if uh, an uninstalling doesn't always get rid of those plugins, it, it, I think it changes from plugin manufacturer to plugin manufacturer. Right? It will re remove some of the stuff that's on the drive, but it won't actually remove the plugin from the folder. So, and all of our plugin uh, uh, plugins are hosted inside in a mac anyway um in macintosh library application support avid and then audio and then we'll find these two folders here we've got the main plugin folder and this is where pro tools will get all of its plugins from this is where it will reference all of the plugins from if they're in that folder the likelihood is they'll show up in uh, in your plugin lists if the licenses are active that is um, and then we have the unused folder where if we want to get rid of any plugins for any reason maybe temporarily uh, maybe for troubleshooting purposes um, then we can stick them into this folder and they'll be there when and we can just drag them back in and again as long as Pro Tools will see the license um, it will uh, it will show them up in our plugin lists but what I'm simply going to do is go into my main plugin folder <clears throat> actually let me just close down Pro Tools because it would need to readdress the folder, wouldn't it? So if my session back open, let's go back into the same folder and we can see that those three Bomb Factory plugins uh, are no longer there. So it, it's a nice, easy process. Um, nothing too complicated about it until Andy and Anders get involved. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Let's wreck this totally. <laughs> uh, only, only really two things that I would add. Um, one is, David, I think you know this off the top of your head. What is the location on a Windows machine? Oh, yes. Good question. Um, just one second. I had to go to the knowledge base to have a look. Um, it's in C, Program Files, Common Files, Avid Audio Plugins. Which, which makes totally sense that it is in common files because it's common to all of the users on the system mm -hmm. as it is on the Mac. So every user on the same system will be able to use the same plugins. And again, you're going to get a plugins folder and an unused plugins folder. Um, I'll say just, and this is just a matter of personal opinion, I will probably move stuff to the unused folder rather than drag it to the trash because uh, the Hagerman rule is the second that you know you'll never need it again, five minutes later you will desperately want it. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, uh, I, I, I think you're totally right, Dave. This is the way to do it. Drag it either to the uh, unused or, or just delete it if you don't want it anymore. Uh, is there? I mean, if if you don't have a license for a particular plugin and you open up Pro Tools, what will happen to that plugin then? You, th th don't we get a little notification to say that it can't be loaded? Do we want to move it to the unused plugins folder? Exactly. So that uh, Pro Tools will actually do that: move plugins that you don't have a license for to mm -hmm. the unused uh, folder, which is a great feature. And then when you you renew your license or whatever. Uh, you can then simply drag it back again. Uh, so th this was uh, really, really quick, which I'm impressed by. Uh, uh, maybe we should talk a little bit about like organizing plugins, or don't we have time for that? Great idea. Andy's mm -hmm. got nothing to do. <clears throat> I got nothing to do. Um, the only, one thing before we go into there is that <laughs> if you're running the um, the latest version of Pro Tools, Pro Tools can run either natively on Silicon in a Mac or using Rosetta. Mm -hmm. um, the amount of plugins that are supported natively is not up to the number of plugins that are supported by uh, Rosetta. So you may open up Pro Tools natively and then get a message that these plugins are not 
mm-hmm. applicable do you want to move them to the unused folder? If you do that, they're now in the unused folder. And if you go back to Rosetta, then those plugins will, you know, if you want to use them, would need to be moved back into the plugin mm-hmm. folder. That's a great piece of advice. I actually had three clients calling me last week about yep. that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, great stuff. Um, um, so do we want, wrap up here, or do we do we do plugin organization as well? Let, uh, if, Go for if, it. If, if Andy's okay, let's look at organizing. I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Okay, kidding me. Uh, so uh, I've got a couple of little tips and tricks for for organizing your plugins, and, and this is uh, just a matter of personal preference, of course, how you organize things. But in setup preferences under the display tab, you've got. Uh, the option how you want to organize your plugin, how they show up in the list when you press the the insert selector. And for me, I've got my organized uh, my plugins organized by category and manufacturer. Uh, but you can choose a flat list, basically every plugin just in order. You can do categories uh, or just manufacturer. I've got category and mm-hmm. manufacturer, as I said, and I'll just show you how that will look. Sorry, fighting against the zoom controls here. Uh, so when I click on an insert selector, my plugins will show up by categories as I have them right here, and by manufacturer if I know I need a, a, a plugin from Eventide or, or whatever. Uh, probably pronounced that wrong. Sorry about that. Eventide stuff is great. Yeah. Um, uh, by the way, two little quick tips here uh, that I really, really love. So if you look really closely in my list, I've actually got two favorite uh, f- favorite plugins that are show up here. And even if I if I if I hold this button and don't go into uh, yeah sorry uh, if I don't go into the list itself, they also show up right here, which is the channel strip and the pro compressor. So you can select a couple of plugins to have in your favorites list. Uh, so if you hold Command while selecting one of of your plugins, that will show up in your favorites list. I love that feature. It's great. Uh, and then the last thing, I'm, you probably are very organized, but I sometimes I have troubles finding a particular plugin that I know that I have. And one of those being the LTC generator plugin from Dolby. And what I do is <laughs> if I click on the insert selector without going into the search field or anything, I can just simply type ahead the name LTC and Pro Tools will start a search for me even though I didn't go to the search field and I can select the LTC generator plugin for instance. I love that feature and I use it so much, uh, uh, constantly use it. See, that was he, it. He had to make it difficult. He had to make it clever. He had, yes. to, he had to go. Sorry about that. So maybe we should put in a disclaimer. So that was the answer of the question and this is the... <laughs> By the way, how much do we love manufacturers that that install all of their plugins in their in the catalog, even if you only bought one. And as we don't, Andy, we don't have time to discuss how much we hate those guys. Oh my God, is it frustrating? Yeah. <laughs> but if if we can go in and just delete them manually, fine. At least I can deal with that. Yeah. But I, yeah, I die yeah. with you. I don't. It wanna, is a bit I don't want to install all of IK Multimedia stuff just to <laughs> use Compressor. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much, chaps. A nice and easy way of, of dealing with it. Just just uninstalling the plugins doesn't necessarily mean they're going to uninstall the plugin itself. It's going to just uninstall all of the uh, the, the extra stuff that gets installed uh, along with it. So nice, easy way to do it. Um, Andy, we will let you go now. I know you've, uh, you've, you've got a thing to do. So we'll say thank you I very much to Andy. You bet. We'll say thank you to Anders. Thank you, Dave. Please hit the thumbs up on our video if you got a bit out of this. Um, You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time we release our new videos. Uh, If you head over to ProToolsAnswers.com, you can check us out over there. And if you fancy uh, joining our inner circle and supporting the show, uh, there's some great benefits, including being invited to our closed uh, inner circle Discord community and uh, masterclasses once a month with uh, one, two, or even three of us. Um, And... uh, that the world will be right thank you very much everyone we will see you next week uh, my name is dave this is Pro Tools answers and we're out